Hi, I'm Alex Homer. I'm a technical artist and a recent master's graduate, and I worked freelancing on Project Pegasus throughout and past the end of my master's degree, where I aimed to design a system which allowed artists to create AAA quality cloudscapes in Unreal with the help of Houdini, and to also allow real-time cloudscaping to enable last-minute drastic changes. This video will discuss some optimization that I did while working on the Project Pegasus cloudscape. I learned a lot throughout the project about Unreal's volumetric cloud system as well as its lighting systems. During the later stages of the project, we reached a point where we had to do a final push for optimization to get the scene running at a good minimum viability for games. So I'd like to run over some methods of optimization that aren't immediately obvious and Unreal doesn't really tell you about. Firstly, the size or thickness of your cloud layer has a big impact over some of the quality parameters. You can see clearly how the quality level of the lower clouds changes as I adjust the entire layer height. At larger values, it becomes grainy and noisy. When I lower it down to be just about this exact same height, the noise disappears. This is important to note as you may have set up your scene with a specific thickness in mind, and then you adjust all of your other light settings to make it perfect, but then later on if you change the thickness, it may affect the settings that you set earlier. Alternatively, you may have this thickness already extremely large and may be wondering why the quality isn't being changed when you change some of the parameters. You'll likely be able to see a lower quality area as it will flicker and become noisy. It's very noticeable. Secondly, tracing distance is essential to optimization, and I would encourage careful consideration of this variable. Within this scene specifically, we want the island to be the focus, and so we don't need to worry about how far we can see. So we can set our value to be 5 kilometers, which just reaches the outer layer of clouds in the distance. This means that we'll only see the clouds that are important to the scene. Keep in mind also that you should adjust this value based on how the scene will be experienced. For this environment, you'll see things from the ground, so it won't look as bare from there. If you have a scene where the clouds will be experienced from higher up or above the clouds, then you may need to adjust this to be bigger and suit your needs more. View sampling is the scale of the tracing sample count in primary views, which is essentially the quality level of the sampling. This is a value that needs adjusting based on the needs of the scene. As shown, the higher the value, the more taxing it is on the renderer, but the higher quality there is. So I'd advise finding the lowest value that provides the best looking quality. Shadow sampling is essentially just like the view sampling, but for shadows. So again, a lower value with the best looking result is the primary concern. A lot of the good looking stuff with our clouds comes from the directional light. So if we hop over to it, we can head to the atmosphere and cloud section and we can enable casting shadows on the clouds if it isn't already. We can also adjust the shadow extent and the shadow depth bias to give accurate shadows on the ground. I hope this video gives you a quick step towards understanding optimization behind the volumetric cloud system in Unreal. I hope you enjoyed watching and feel free to check out some of the cloud tutorials released alongside Project Pegasus, which can give you a look into how I created the specific cloud types within the environment using the new Houdini 20 tools. You can find the video on the Project Pegasus page on the SideFX website or on the SideFX YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.